This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. So let's look at the third aspect now of this chapter with regard to another accounting standard uh, that is linked into the world of our non-current assets. And this one's government grants covered by IAS 20. Uh, government grants are effectively split into to two aspects. Uh, and the focus here in this lecture is on the actual grant itself. So the physical accounting of the cash that you receive. Uh, there is also government assistance uh, within the standard. So you may have received uh, some, some help with regards to technical advice uh, from a government body. Uh, if that's the case, that government assistance is disclosed. Okay, so there's, there's nothing to physically account for if you're giving advice. Uh, it's just giving you ideas on maybe how you can improve your business, uh, how you can go through there and generate better income or better funds of financing. It helps the business, doesn't it? But there's no monetary amount to it but you need to be able to have comparability with entities so that assistance needs to be disclosed because you may have had that assistance and therefore perform better than another entity that may not have had the assistance and not performed as well as yourselves okay so, so just be aware of that you're, you're likely to find government assistance discussed for a page or so in, in any of your study text from your chosen tuition provider as i said here I want to focus on your government grant, the physical cash receipt, because what's going to go through and happen is that you will go through there and receive money from the government. So you will debit the bank. The issue is what you do with the credit. OK, uh, so what we're going to go through and do is, is the credit entry effectively uses what is referred to as a. Deferred income approach. So when you receive the grants, OK, so assuming that you have met the conditions laid out by the government, uh, the fact that you've actually received it or have been promised to receive it, you would recognise that as maybe a receivable if it's promised, uh, but as an asset on the bank if you physically received it. The credit side is shown then as deferred income, OK? And what you then do with that deferred income depends upon whether it is to buy a depreciating asset. Uh, so if you buy a depreciating asset, that is referred to as a capital grant. Uh, or alternatively, you may have received the grant uh, for reaching a, a number of employees that you have employed and therefore you've received cash to help you uh, recruit that number of employees. So therefore, uh, that will be referred to as a revenue grant. Uh, so that revenue grant will go through there and be recognised on a systematic basis. So matching the expenditure or the income uh, to the period where you've got that benefit. So here, if it was for the creation of a number of jobs, you would recognise that immediately uh, once you've met those number of jobs being created. But if it's there for a capital grant, you need to go through there and release that deferred income over the life of the assets, okay, using the same method. So if it was straight line, which it is likely to be, you would release it straight line over the same number of years. If it's reducing balance, then by all means, use reducing balance, okay. But if you think about it, reducing balance is normally used for motor vehicles, and do we get grants for? For, for purchasing motor vehicles, I'm, I'm not a government official, but it, it would seem unlikely. Okay, uh, government grants there are, are for helping you with machinery, so, so you can go through there and produce more goods, better quality goods, generate more revenue. If there's more revenue, there's more tax for the government, isn't there? So they do get their grant back in a in in a, in a roundabout sense of the word. Okay, happy with that? Should we play with the numbers? See how we get on. Okay. Uh, so this one here, it says, explain how the purchase of property, plants and equipment and the government grant uh, would be dealt with in the financial statements. Well, I'm not too fussed about the explanation because the explanation is in the answers at the back of the class notes. And you can read that in your own time. 
I want to go through there and focus on the financial statements and how we would go through there and record this in the SFP and also within the statement of profit or loss. Okay, so what have we got? Uh, well, it says here, Tweddle bought an item of property, plant and equipment. Is it there for $10 million? Uh, and received the government grant of $2 million. And the PPE has a useful life of 10 years. Okay. Uh, so we'll capitalise the asset at 10 million, depreciate it over 10 years. So let's do that first. Let's forget about the grant. Now let's go through there and have a look at year one. Okay. So in year one, within my non current assets, You've got your property, plant, and equipment. Uh, we capitalized it. Was it at 10 million? Just check. Yep, 10 million, 10 years. And we will therefore then have charged depreciation. The depreciation will be the 10 million over the 10. I don't even need a calculator for that. Check, yeah, it's right, isn't it? Yeah, the depreciation is there as, as 1,000, isn't it? Okay, uh, that depreciation, I deduct from the PPE to give me a carrying value of 9,000, okay? Don't panic that the depreciation has been put in brackets. It's just to show the, that that depreciation is an expense, okay? There we go. Happy? You've passed. There we go. You know, there's two bits to deal with. The PPE, the government grant. We've done PPE several times already. The government grant is new. You've got half of it right. Game over. Relax. Beat up. Grab yourself a cup of tea. Wait, we need to deal with the government grant, don't we? Okay. So what we've got that is that we're going to have uh, 10,000. Okay. So, or sorry, 2 million, wasn't it? So we will have debited the bank with the two million, and we will then credit the deferred income with two million. Okay, so that the The initial recognition, isn't it? Okay. Deferred income, it is a current liability, isn't it? Then what happens is you, you then will release that two million over the same life as the asset itself. So is that two million divided by the ten years? is 200 isn't it so what we're going to go through and do there is each year you will debit your deferred income is it there with 200 and you will credit your income with 200 okay so you can call it grant income so what you're doing there is that you're crediting your grant income in the statement of profit or loss. So should we put that in there? So you've then got your grant income of 200. And then you are debiting the deferred income with 200. So what's going to happen there is that in at the end of year one, your deferred income will be the two thousand less the two hundred. That you've released 
which gives you 1,800 at the end of the year. Okay. However, just be careful. This is where it gets a bit tricky because what you then need to go through and do is your deferred income is a liability. Uh, it is a credit balance and that will then need to be split into current and non-current. Okay. So at the end of this first year, there's 1,800 to be released over the final nine years of which the current. So what will be released in 12 months is 200, meaning therefore that the non-current amount. Must be a balancing figure. Of 1,600. OK. There we go. So uh, we want to be specific about what we have within our statement of financial position, which you're more than welcome to do so. You will have there your non-current liabilities being your deferred income, which is 1,600. And then your current liabilities as your deferred income is there at 200 okay that's it okay so what's in the current liabilities is the one year amount that will be released next year and then the non-current is what is then due after that so that will then be i think if i'm correct in saying so the final eight years okay because we're at the end of the first year out of 10 one more year will be released next year so that would be the second year out of 10 and then eight more will be released in the future okay uh so there we go that ladies and gents is about as complicated as what it gets okay uh there's a tiny little bit of narrative that i've thrown in i think it's more of an sbr issue as opposed to a financial reporting issue uh, but just note, if a government grant is repayable, so the government's short of money and wants its money back, uh, it's a change in accounting estimates. OK, so you don't go back and change anything you've done in the past. You just go through there and credit the bank. And then what you will go through and do, first of all, is debit your deferred income balance first. And then if the amount that you have paid is in excess of the deferred income balance that is left, then any excess is taken as an expense. OK, so if you like journal entries, so what's going to happen there is that you will credit the bank. And then you will debit. Deferred income and debit an expense so debit deferred income first look at the expense effectively as a balancing figure between the amount that you've paid back and what you've had to remove from the deferred income balance but again it's there just in case but don't worry about it focus on making sure that you know the basics the essentials of what government grants is and how to calculate it within the financial statements and we've gone through there haven't we with that example there and shown how to do it okay any questions ask the tutor see you next time